Hey everyone, Jerry with Vinci Digital. This week we'll be taking our conversation in a bit of a different direction. I wanted to talk about James Prochaska's trans theoretical model of behavior change and how it relates or can be applied to your marketing efforts. So before we even get into talking about marketing at all, let me clarify what the hell I'm even talking about. The trans theoretical model or TTM for short was developed by Prochaska in the late 1970s to assess and understand an individual's readiness to act on and carry out a new healthier behavior. It also provides strategies and processes or stages of change that an individual will go through along the way. This model was developed through studies examining the experiences of smokers who quit on their own versus those who needed further treatment or help to curb the habit. This theory helped us understand that people quit smoking if they were ready to do so. So the trans theoretical model helps us understand the decision-making process individuals go through when making intentional changes, not changes that are forced or coerced into them. From TTM, we've learned that people don't change behaviors quickly and decisively. Rather, change in behavior, especially habitual behaviors, occur through a cyclical and evolutionary process that waxes and wanes depending on someone's determination, their desire, and their willingness to change. So, like a smoker, Making the intentional choice to quit, the TTM model could be applied to any situation where a business owner finds themselves looking to make a change in their business and more specifically, their marketing. In our experience, one of the many death sentences small businesses often encounter is complacency in their marketing strategy. They find one thing that worked and maybe worked once or maybe worked a few times, or even if it worked for a few months or maybe even a year, they create their entire long-term strategy around it. However, marketing is a moving target and change is always needed to at least maintain your current results and is the only way to make positive lasting growth a possibility. The TTM model reminds us that change is slow and sometimes painful and therefore less desirable than staying put. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? The sad truth is your marketing strategy is probably already broken or in disrepair and you're running out of time to fix it. So if you haven't thought about changing your marketing strategy or refuse to do so, even as you watch your revenue and sales plummet, your brand might be fucked. However, as always, all is not lost. Let's take a moment and delve into Prochaska's model of behavior change and look at the different stages you might encounter in your struggle to revitalize your marketing strategy for good. So the first stage of TTM is pre-contemplation. At this stage, if you're running a business with an outdated marketing strategy, you probably have recognized that what you're doing isn't working. And while you might be resistant to the idea of change because your existing strategy has worked in the past, you also know that something doesn't quite feel right. The second stage is contemplation. At this stage, you're fully aware the need to change is evident. However, that doesn't mean you're ready to take action just yet. With marketing, this might mean you continue to rely on outdated methods and the thought of trying something new like rebuilding your website or getting more involved on social media or even investing in a new ad campaign seems overwhelming. Many business owners get stuck in the stage because it's hard to stay motivated enough to push for real change and see it through. The third and possibly most critical stage when it comes to marketing is preparation. Now that you're ready to move forward and you're setting the intention to adjust your strategy and approach to marketing, you can start taking small steps to lasting change. Preparation can mean many things from doing research and formulating a plan or even consulting with a marketing expert. Working with an expert can help you reaffirm your decision and adjust your approach so it's more successful. Preparation should help you identify the strategies and tactics that you'll carry out and how these impact both short-term and long-term costs and revenue. The fourth stage is action. <laughs> it's both exciting and stressful to begin making forward progress because we typically reject or rebel no matter any change, no matter how well prepared we are to handle it. Now that you know making these strategic changes in your business are right for you, sit back and watch your strategy come to life. So action could mean a lot of things like developing new content for your blog, or a new more engaging approach to social media, or creating new buyer personas to appeal to a specific target market. The fifth stage is maintenance. Here again, many business owners get stuck because this is where you put all your effort and attention on to not backsliding into your former strategy or behavior. 
For marketing, this stage typically involves careful tracking of your campaign or new initiative to measure the results. It's really important to measure results because if you observe positive progress, you'll be less likely to reject change or return to bad habits from the past. Maintenance also focuses on small changes, not major upheavals in your strategy. Too many changes in your strategy too quickly will lead to an unclear picture of what is and what isn't working. Marketing should be seen as a marathon and not a sprint. There's also the misconception that if you build it, they will come. But in reality, when you launch a new marketing endeavor, all you've built is an island in the middle of the ocean. Building any worthwhile endeavor takes time and patience and determination to transform your deserted island into a sought after destination for your target audience. The sixth and last stage is termination. Now that sounds super negative, and when we think of making positive change, we often imagine a happy ending. However, change is rarely that simple or cut and dry. In this model, it's cyclical for a reason. There's usually some degree of backpedaling that can happen in this process. So addiction treatment is a great example of this where relapse is tough to avoid. If you never reach the termination stage when making changes for your business, don't see this as a failure. Staying in the maintenance phase simply means continuing to have the opportunity to grow and evolve. And that doesn't sound too bad. So if you can get to the termination phase, then great. All that means is there's no longer any desire to return to your previous strategy or behavior. So for your business, while you have truly embraced a new approach that works well for your business, you'll still want to track metrics to avoid growing stagnant and end up right back where you were when you started this process. Marketing is an evolutionary process. There are numerous components all working together that are constantly in flux and influenced by your competitors, your target markets, industry trends, consumer preferences, the economy, and a hell of a lot more. So to learn more about the impact Prochaska's behavior change model can have on your business's ability to make positive, lasting change for the betterment of your organization, make sure to check out our latest article, which drops tomorrow on the Vinci blog. And as always, if you have additional questions and wanna learn more about how to apply the trans-theoretical model to your marketing strategy, let's connect and see what that might look like for your business. Hey, thanks again for hanging out with me today. I know it was a long one and I'll chat with you soon.